Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, Today on this first day of January 2023, we as Catholics celebrate three important things. Firstly, today is the New Year's Day. Secondly, since 1967, the 1st of January is celebrated as the World Day of Peace. And to crown them both, today we celebrate the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. On this New Year's Day, I wish you all a very happy New Year 2023. I was wondering, will it not be interesting to find out how many times this expression, this greeting will be shared today? Happy New Year. A few millions or a billion times? But I wonder, of these few million times, how many people really mean, wish, and sincerely pray that the person to whom it is sent be really happy and be blessed? So sometimes we wonder if this greeting has just become mechanical and the new technolo technologies and gadgets have made it very easy for this wish to be passed on impersonally and mechanically. But the church today really wants all of us all to be blessed on this New Year's Day and be at peace as readings and the responsorial psalm of today's liturgy present before us. And above all, what a wonderful way to begin a new year knowing that we are loved and cared by a mother, the very mother of God, the Son. None of us knows what 2023 holds for us. But when we have a mother, a loving mother, and a powerful intercessor with us, what is there to be worried about? Let's start with the importance of the new year. A new year is a chance to begin anew. And generally, so many people talk about new year resolutions. I remember this old story. One man proudly said at the end of a year, I made six resolutions at the beginning of this year, and I am proud, I am happy to say that I have kept them very well. Then after a pause he added, on top of the shelf in my bedroom. Yes, for many the situation is not different, but the Lord helps us to start again and again, to carry on. He is the one who helps us to start to make all things new again, as the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 5 says. Our every wish of New Year must be a prayer, that the other indeed receives the blessing, the strength and the power to carry on their effort to be renewed for which we need the grace of God. That's why the liturgy today presents for, before us a beautiful prayers of blessings, especially in the first reading of the responsorial psalm. The first reading has one of the ancient blessings given by God himself through Moses to Aaron, the high priest, and his sons. The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Book of Numbers chapter 6 verses 24 to 26. What more blessing do we need than such a great blessing from the Lord himself as we begin the new year 2023? This blessing in a unique way was experienced by Mary, who was chosen by God from the first moment of her existence to be the mother of his incarnate son. She is the blessed among women. Luke 1.42 And that's what we remember secondly today, the solemnity of Mary, mother of God. A little bit of explanation is needed to understand this title of mother of God as there are so many who object not only to this title, Mother of God, 
but to any kind of reverence given to Mary, for they consider her role insignificant once she gave birth to Jesus Christ. Firstly, our belief in Mary is intrinsically related to our faith in Jesus Christ. All the Marian dogmas, in fact, emphasize one or another aspect of the mystery of Christ. By affirming Mary as the mother of God, what is affirmed and proclaimed is a Christological doctrine that Jesus is not two persons, one divine and one human, but is one person with two natures. The controversy began in the beginning of the 5th century. If Jesus Christ was fully divine or fully human or both? Or were there two persons in Jesus or only one? And if Mary, the mother only of the human Jesus, the incarnate one, or also of the divine Jesus? Nestorius of Constantinople began to teach that Mary should be called Christotokos, which means Christ bearer, to restrict her role to the mother of Christ's humanity only and not his divine nature. Thus, in effect, there are two persons in Jesus. One is fully human and one is fully divine. But the question is whether there was a time when Jesus was not God. Was he not God when he was conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary? Or was he just a human person from conception until his resurrection? And then he received back his divinity? We know this contradicts the teaching of Jesus himself. And St. John very clearly states that the one who became flesh is the eternal word of God, the creator God himself. So, if there was no time when Jesus was not God, that means Mary cannot be the mother only of the human person of Jesus, but of the whole person of Jesus, who was always God from the beginning of time forever. Therefore, the Ecumenical Council of Ephesus in 431 AD accepted the title of Theotokos or God-bearer to Mary and it was declared a dogma in the Council of Chalcedon in AD 451. What this dogma does not mean is that Mary is the mother of the Trinitarian God or the Father and the Holy Spirit which would mean Mary was before them. Now that is not what it means when we say Mary is the mother of God. What it does mean is that she is the mother of the incarnate Son of God, Jesus, who is fully God and fully human. At no time his divinity disappeared or was absent and that he received his human nature from her. Moreover, this dogma is purely biblical. The angel Gabriel, when he came to Mary, announced, Do not be afraid, Mary. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and he shall be called the Son of the Most High. Luke 1, 30-32 Elizabeth later on proclaimed, Why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. Luke 1, 42, 43. The word Lord or Kyrios is used often in the Old Testament to refer to God. And St. Paul refers to this when he writes to the Galatians, as we heard in the second reading today. God sent forth his son born of a woman. Galatians 4.4 4. The scripture passages give us ample support that Mary is the mother of God because God chose her to be the mother of Jesus. In short, the Lord willed that Mary to be his mother as he was able to choose his own mother 
when he decided to be born in human flesh. Thus we end the Christmas octave today, once again reminding ourselves, as we heard in the Gospel passage, that that little baby born in that manger is indeed the Son of God and Mary is the Mother of God. When a child is born, a mother is born. In the birth of the Son of God, Mary begins to be the Mother of God. And we know every day of the year we celebrate the feast of one or another saint. But on the first day of January, the very beginning of every year, we celebrate Mary's feast to show her unique place and also because of this, her special role in the life of Jesus, resulting in her powerful intercessory power before her son for us. In a way, we are all called to be their talkers, God bearers. We were anointed by the Holy Spirit as Mary was overshadowed by the power of the Spirit. But we fail to bear the fruit, Jesus Christ, in our lives. We fail to produce the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Today, even those who receive the Holy Spirit, like Mary, produce hatred, violence, war and division. That is why the church reminds us to pray for peace in the world. That we begin every new year wishing and praying for Jesus' peace in the world, in the families, in the communities, and in our hearts. So on this new year day, we are called to be renewed by the Lord, to be God bearers, and to become peacemakers. Dear sisters and brothers, let our prayer today and for the whole year and for all be this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.